Hey everyone, Jessica Schwartz here. Um, I wanted to actually jump on today because I am celebrating something and I want to share it with you. Um, I have spoken a little bit before about how I got a traditional publishing contract and I'm under contract for both my last book, my second book, You Are Not Alone, and my next book, which is going to be the second volume and another another book of the You Are Not Alone series, which is true stories um, of from people in their own words. People contributed their own personal stories of sexual harassment, assault, and abuse, and the writing process is cathartic and sharing it is cathartic. And many of them told me that they'd never told their stories before or that they um, just hadn't felt like they had had a voice and that people were listening to them and they thanked me. And I've gotten some amazing messages from people who have read the book and shared their stories with me afterwards um, and how it impacted them. And it was just something that was really a passion project for me. When you look at my business as a freelance writer and editor, I don't do a lot of freelance writing um, for companies or for people in that space, in the sexual assault and harassment and abuse or in the Me Too space. It was really a passion project. It wasn't something that I did to make a ton of money or to um, exploit anyone is, is a comment that I've gotten before. Um, it was genuinely a passion project and to give the voice to people who did not have one or didn't feel that they were heard. And it was something that was really important to me because even though I don't have a huge platform, I do have a platform. And I do believe that as someone with a platform, I am both obligated and I want to use that platform for good things. And so Publishing that book was a major milestone for me. Um, I originally published it in March 14th, 2018, and I launched it, and it was an amazing process, and I got some amazing feedback, and just, it was really, really amazing. Um, and I don't mean to overuse the word amazing. Um, and then I actually got picked up by a publisher. Sunbury Press offered me a contract at the end of 2018. We started talking in, I think, November of 2018, and they picked up my book uh, and me as an author, and they offered me a contract to republish the first book. Now, because I self-published it, I did own the publishing rights as the author and publisher, so I was able to do that without having to buy my publishing rights from another publisher or anything like that, and I did so. So as of right now, uh, You Are Not Alone, the original book, is available and has been republished by Sunbury slash Brown Posey Press. And it's available um, in paperback and uh, online in places like Barnes and & Noble and in uh, on Amazon and on their own Sunbury website. I know that they're gearing up to do some more marketing and promotions to really push it. Um, of course, with a traditional publisher, if they don't make money, you don't make money. So it is in their best interest. Like it, it, if they offer you a contract, it's in their best interest to make money. And if they don't sell the book, they don't make money on it. So it's absolutely in their best interest to market it and promote it. So the reason I wanted to jump on today was not just because I wanted to celebrate the republishing and the relaunching of that book, but because I want to talk to you about how I got a traditional publishing contract in the first place. I have gotten a lot of questions about how to get a traditional publisher um, or which is better, uh, traditional publishing or self-publishing. And I actually have done both videos and articles on the differences and what might work better for you between self-publishing and traditional publishing. And I'll link those below um, in case you're interested in taking a look at that because I'm not going to dive into uh, which is better or which is right for you in this video. But I do want to tell you how I got a traditional publisher. It's one of the main questions I'm asked by people because I have both self-publishing and traditional publishing experience. Um, up until very recently, I had never had traditional publishing experience and it's been a really exciting journey for me. Um, so there are a couple different ways to find a traditional publisher. You can find a literary agent and an agent is someone who will act as a go-between between the author and the publishers. They typically have a lot of traditional publishing and uh, publishing experience, so they know what the different publishers are looking for, what kind of manuscripts they want, what kind of books they publish and that they might currently be looking for. If you get an agent, you are far more likely to get a publishing contract than if you're just mailing out your, submit your manuscript to random publishers. It's absolutely true. I think literary agents 
are awesome, and I think that they do a really good job. Um, I think for me personally, I chose not to go the agent route for several reasons. Um, one is because they do take up to like between 10 and 40% of any sales and royalties and advances that you get. Um, they are providing you a service and you must pay for that service out of your sales. Um, and then another one is because I already had an idea of what type of publisher I wanted to go for. So this is what I did to find a publisher. The first thing I did was I went on to Publishers Archives and onto Google and I just researched publishers that specialize in nonfiction. So once I was able to narrow down publishers, both independent and large publishers, who specifically um, look for and focus on nonfiction and have previously published nonfiction, the next thing I did was I, have, I individually went into each of those publishers that I then had the names of, and I was looking at different books that they've published before. Do they actively publish nonfiction now, or was that something they did in the past? Are they focusing on nonfiction as an imprint now? So that was one question I was looking to get answered. Another was looking for their submission guidelines. Do they require you to have the entire manuscript complete? Do they require you to send in a query letter or just a few chapters? Um, do they require you uh, to do any special things for uh, submitting your manuscript? And the main thing I looked for was a name. So when I was looking for publishers, I knew that I wanted to go with a smaller, more independent press, not a vanity publisher. It's not an online publisher. They are a traditional publisher, but Sunbury is an independent publisher, meaning that it's not one of the big five. So it's not Random House. It's not Penguin. Um, it's not McGraw-Hill. It's not these giant publishers who receive thousands upon thousands of manuscripts every year. And we've all heard of the famous slush pile where editors just have a huge pile of manuscripts that have been submitted but either haven't been read yet or have been rejected. So I knew I didn't want to go with the big five. Um, for a lot of reasons, I, I think that it would have taken a lot longer. I don't know that they would have wanted my manuscript in the first place. Um, I didn't really want to go after the big fish because I didn't think that it was going to be successful for me in the time frame I wanted to be successful in. So that was a personal choice. And so the next thing I did was looking for names. So I identified about 15 uh, nonfiction publishers that had published books in a similar genre of what I was trying to do. Maybe not specifically within Me Too, but maybe they've published memoirs of someone who's been sexually assaulted. Maybe they have published um, other nonfiction books in a similar but not necessarily the exact same genre. Because um, I also don't want to copy if they've published the exact same book before, which is, I mean, obviously that's unlikely. Obviously, many people have published anthologies or collections, but I believe that mine is unique and interesting and different, and I have that has been born to be the case. Um, so I'm very proud of that. I certainly am not out here copying other people's work or copying other um, authors or anything like that. That's not my goal here. So what I did next was I looked for names and email addresses. So if I identified the name of a senior editor at a specific publishing house or if I identified the, uh, the actual publisher themselves, I actually wrote up an email. And instead of going through their traditional submission guidelines, I actually emailed them directly. Um, and there are places you can look online to try to find people's email addresses. I think there's a tool called hunter.io that I've used in the past um, that you can find. You can type in the website name and it'll pop up with email addresses associated with that website that they know of. So um, that's one way to do it. You can also just Google those names and see if you can find them through LinkedIn or through any other sites that might have their email address listed. This is all a lot of research. I love research. I love digging in and finding this information. So this is something that really spoke to me and I was very excited about. Um, and so I then emailed them. I crafted an email talking about who I am, what the book is, why I wrote it, um, why I was writing it because I was actually when I initially reached out to publishers I was only reaching out regarding the next book I haven't even started writing it yet but I know that I've collected enough stories to um, start to put together the next book for You Are Not Alone I wanted to do a second volume to feature the stories that have been sent to me since the first volume was uh, published because those people deserve a voice as well 
So um, I actually approached them and said, you know, this is what I'm going to be writing. It's a second one in a series um, that I didn't know was going to be a series when I started writing it. But this is the first one. Here's a link to it. Here's some reviews and some blog posts that have been written about it um, so that you can kind of see what it's all about. And I also attached a PDF of the original one in its completed formatted form so that they could really see what it was about. And if they wanted to get a chance to see the formatting, anything like that, because I wasn't exactly sure what they needed. So I sent them everything. <laughs> um, so I, uh, several of them didn't respond at all. Some people just said, oh, you can submit it through our website. And then one person, um, I actually ended up getting a couple of responses, but one of them responded fairly quickly. And Sunbury Press was amazing. Um, not only did he respond pretty quickly and say, this is something that we'd be really interested in, he actually took the time then to go back and look at the first book, as well as my other work that I've done, and came back and actually asked if he could republish the first one in addition to having me under contract to publish the second one that wasn't written yet um, under their name. And so this was something that was extremely exciting to me. I had no intentions of trying to get somebody to republish a book that I'd already published and had been out for uh, almost a year at that point. And I just thought it was really amazing that they took the time. And so uh, the publisher at Sunbury Press was very clear to tell me that they do get self-published authors reaching out to them pretty regularly. They get over a thousand submissions per year for, for, for full manuscripts, and they only publish about 7% of them, um, which is pretty in line with a lot of publishers. Uh, so it's something that that's why I didn't want to just send my resume, send my book through the website because I know that these people are getting a ton of submissions and I really wanted not only to stand out, but really I just wanted to get a response. It's fine if you say no, but there's no harm in asking typically. So that was my journey to become a traditionally published author and it's now officially true. My second book, You Are Not Alone, um, true stories uh, from around the world of sexual assault, harassment, and abuse have has been republished by Sunbury Press um, and one of their imprints, Brown Posey Press. So that was very, very exciting for me. And I'm really, really happy to be part of working with Sunbury and everyone I've worked with, the editors, the formatters, the publisher himself, everyone's been amazing. Um, they've been completely awesome. They republished it really quickly. We signed the contract uh, finished signing the contract and getting everything started, I think at the beginning of January. And it is, an, and it was republished at the end of February. So they actually went in and they recreated my cover. They reformatted the book. They went through, sent it through editing just to see if there was anything that we missed. And now it's out again. So they moved extremely quickly. And I just want to give a couple of really quick tips. So they said, um, the publisher I spoke with actually said that they get self-published authors reaching out to them with manuscripts pretty regularly. And um, he did say that there's a few things that they specifically look for. And he said that they look for if you have a professionally done cover, if it's professionally formatted and professionally edited, if it is a professional work, it's not just something you typed in Word and posted on Amazon. It's something that you took the time and money to get professionally done um, and that it's something that was treated like a published, like a trade published book because that's the kind of quality they want from their authors. They want somebody who's taking it super seriously, who is willing to invest the time and the money into making it a professional work. Um, because that to them, he said that that shows that you're really in it, that you're not, you're not just like throwing something up and moving on to the next thing that you're really taking it seriously. Another thing he said they look for is good reviews. Um, he said that the reviews on my book, uh, previously had been really good and, um, impactful. And so that is, that shows him that there's not a ton of editing mistakes. There's not a ton that it is well written. And then the last thing is that he, uh, he read it. He read my my book, the previous book that I'd done, and he enjoyed it. And he said that it's it has nothing to do with being self-published. It's about the book. And so I just wanted to share my journey with you because I know that this is something that I get a ton of questions about. And I've gone through both processes, so I really wanted to share how I found a traditional publisher and maybe uh, how you can too and give you some tips on what they look for in a self-published book that they want to republish. 
So I'm going to provide some links down below of uh, where you can now find my newly released book, um, my old newly released book, um, as well as I'm going to go ahead and link a video on the pros and cons of or just the comparison of self-publishing versus traditional publishing so that you guys can take a look and see what's a better fit for you. Um, now, on that note, my first book, Write, Get Paid, Repeat, um, I'm actually not even, I didn't even ask for them to take a look at it or to republish it. That wasn't my goal at all. That book has served its purpose for me and has done really well in a self-published format. And I don't want to change that. Like there's, there are reasons why I self-publish it and those reasons still hold water. So I don't need to look for something or to change the way that works. So I actually am both published now. <laughs> Um, so look for those links down below. Leave, drop me a comment if you have any questions or concerns. I'm happy to talk. Have a great day.